Hi, this is calculus section 3.7. We're doing optimization with polynomials. Now, when we talk about optimization, we're going to be finding the maximums or the minimums and writing equations for this and, and setting these situations up. But to start off with, we want to do a, a warm up problem. So, using your calculus, I'd like you to find the minimum value of the equation y equals 3x squared minus 9x plus 17. And then you can go ahead and do the minimum value for uh, the same function on the closed interval. So go ahead and pause and try that, and I'll show you the solution. So if we start with this first one, we just want to take the derivative, and then we find out when the derivative is 0. This would be at x equal to 3 halves. Now the question is, is, is that the minimum value? No, the x value is where it occurs. We want to find uh, what the actual minimum value is. So we have to take that x value and plug it into our original function to figure out what our minimum value is. So if I plug that all in, I get 10.25. And so this would be the minimum value that I'm looking for on this interval. You can also justify that this is a minimum value by checking the derivative. So I can take an x, this would be 3 halves, and then I can do f prime of x, which in this case is y prime. And y prime to the left of 3 halves would be, for instance, plug in 0, that would give me a negative. And then to the right of 3 halves, pick a number to the right of that, probably 2, that would be a positive. So I'm decreasing, increasing. Uh, my original function. Therefore, this is a minimum value. Now, to do the minimum value uh, on a closed interval, you'd have to see if this falls in there. Well, first of all, it doesn't. So all you're going to be doing is comparing these two values, or I should say the y values at these two x values. And so you can just set up a little chart and to see which one is the minimum value, 2 and 5. and Really, I got this in my calculator here, 2 and 5. And then y1 is my function, y2 is my derivative. And so with uh, y1, the function, I get 11 and 47. So the minimum value on that interval is going to be 11. And some people might say, well, we're also increasing because the derivative is positive uh, to the right of 3 halves, which is true. So if we're doing that, then this must be a minimum. That's another way to look at it. So this is the minimum value on this interval. Now moving on to optimization. When we want to optimize things, what we're doing is we're, we are finding the maxes in the mins. But we need to write the equation to set this up. So what we do is we write something that's called the primary equation. The primary equation is something that we want to optimize. And a lot of times it's in terms of more than one variable. Secondary equation is help, helpful to substitute so everything becomes in terms of one variable. So here's a simple example here. Find two positive integers where the product is 36 and the sum is the minimum. So the question for the primary equation is, is what are we trying to optimize? Well, here's the minimum and it says sum. So it's the sum of two numbers. So I'm going to call it x plus y. Now, I don't like this in terms of two variables, so I need it in terms of one. So I'm going to take a secondary equation that relates these two together. Well, that would be the product. And we can see that the product of these two is 36. So what I can do is I can take this and I can solve for one of these variables so that now I can take this y, substitute it out here with this. So the primary equation in terms of one variable would be x plus 36 over x. Now, how do we solve this out? Well, we're going to use our calculus. So we take s prime is equal to 1 plus, and this is 36x to the negative 1. I always have to write this for myself. So I get uh, negative 36x to the negative 2. And so when we set this equal to 0 and solve this, If you go ahead and do this, bring the, I like to just make these, set these equal to each other. As you can see then, x squared is equal to 36, so x is equal to plus or minus 
6. I think I said x is x squared is equal to 36, so x is equal to plus or minus 6. We asked for two positives, so I'm going to ignore the negative. How do I find the y? Well, I go to the equation that relates them together, and I can get the uh, y as well. So y is equal to 6. And so those are my two values, x and y. Moving on to the next one, and I did answer the question. Just always make sure that you answer the question. It says find two positive integers, and so I just want to get rid of this negative there. Okay? And then if I look at this next uh, equation, a chicken farmer needs three congruent rectangular pens for her chickens, and she has 600 feet of fence. What dimensions should she use to make the area a maximum? Well, what we want to do is we need to label all of these pieces because that goes into the fencing that we're going to be using. So I'm going to call this x, this x, and this x, and then similarly down here. And if I add those up with all of these cross segments, that's going to give me my 600 um, feet of fence. But what are we trying to optimize? Well, what we're trying to optimize is the area. So the area is going to be 3x times y. Oh, I got to pause this for a while. I jumped ahead of myself a little bit. Oh, no, I'm sorry, this is right. So we go 3x across and y down here. That is what we do want to optimize. Now, our secondary equation is the thing that relates x and y together again. Well, we use this idea of the total fencing being 600 feet. So I'm going to take 6x, and I'm going to add in 4y, and that's going to be equal to 600. And if we solve this for y, And then I can take this and simplify it a little bit. So my secondary equation is going to be y is equal to 600 divided by 4 is 150. And then 6 divided by 4 is 3 halves. Now my primary equation in terms of all one variable, I'm going to take out this one here and replace it with this here. So overall, I have the area is equal to 3x times 150 minus 3 halves x. So to solve this out, we got to multiply. So I'm going to get 450x. It's the easiest way to do this rather than the product rule. And then minus 9 halves x squared. A prime. So I get 450 minus 9x. Set this equal to 0 because this is how we optimize, I'm going to get x is equal to 50. Back substitute this one in, where I relate x and y together, and I'm going to get y is equal to 75. Now, did I answer my question? What dimension, dimensions should you use to make the area maximum? Well, the dimensions are 75 because that's my y value, times 3x. So it's by 150. That would be my dimensions of the uh, full pen that I would put together for this. All right, moving on. Open-ended box. Many of you have seen this problem before. But what we do is we take a sheet of paper, or cardboard, whatever you want to say, and we're going to cut out the corners. So I'm going to cut out these corners of this piece of paper and what we want to do is we want to try to fold this up so it makes an open-ended box well with that open-ended box we want to maximize the volume for a given size sheet of paper that we give you so if you read these instructions here I have this dimension which is 24 this dimension here which is 16 and what we want to do is uh, maximize the volume. So if I do a an equation, the primary equation is length times width times height. And so what I have to do is I have to take each one of those dimensions of my box and rewrite them all in terms of one variable. 
So first of all, let's name our cutout. Our cutout side is going to be x by x. And if I figure out these other dimensions, I should be able to do that because when I fold this up, this is going to be the length, this is going to be the width, and then the height is going to be this here. So putting this all together, I got x and x on both sides, so this red piece would be 24 minus 2x, which I can call the length. And then here, I got the width, which would be similarly 16 minus 2x. And then the height again is x. So if I write a formula for this, this is going to be volume. It's going to be 24 minus 2x, 16 minus 2x times x. That would be my overall volume. And so what I want to do to optimize this is that I need to find the derivative. So why don't you go ahead and expand this and then take the derivative piece by piece. Pause and I'll come back to you. So if I go ahead and take the derivative, well, first of all, I expanded this out, and then I took the derivative here, and then I set it equal to zero. And so this is what I'm ending up with. Then I go to my calculator, and I can find the zeros of this, because I don't think the zeros are going to be pretty. So if I look at the graph, uh, first of all, we've got to separate out what, what this is now. This is my model. This is the model of the volume of the open-ended box. This here is my derivative. Notice that my derivative is 0 Oh, when the function has a slope of 0. It makes sense. My derivative changes from positive to negative at the maximum because my slope is positive on this side, negative on this side, 0 in between. And so if I find this value right here, the 0 of my derivative, that will tell me where I have my maximum then I'd have to take that x value and plug it in to find the actual volume on here. So find the zero of this, and then go ahead and find out whatever y value ends up there. So my zero turned out to be at 3.13, and I can give you more digits here. If I, I had quite a few digits there from my calculation for the zero, and then I plug that into my y function, so I'm going to get 540, 0.83. If I need more decimal places, I can go over the top of it. 540.828. That sounds a little bit better. And then this one, it looks like zero. No, it doesn't look like zero. This is a calculation error, partly because I just put in a rounded value here, and it's not going to give me the exact zero value for my derivative. Y2, I put my derivative in there. Okay? So that should be approximately zero. So let's fill that in at the end. So my x value is 3.13899. That's carried out too far. And then the, my volume is this. So that's what I can write. Now, I ask here, what's the practical domain? Now, you might have noticed I left out some answers. I have a, um, I have a 0 right here as well on my derivative. This is a 0 for my derivative. Uh, I'm sorry, this one right here. This is a zero for the derivative because the volume function goes up, goes down, and goes down below again. But the question is, why do I even look at these values, or why am I excluding these values? That's because our model only holds true from zero to eight. And why eight? Well, that's because where our volume would become zero because I have a side of 16. And if I cut out eight and eight here, I would have nothing left to fold up. So my volume turns to zero again. So overall on the graph, I'm just looking at this piece here. So I ignore this other zero over here. So the value that I'm looking for is right here. There's my maximum value that corresponds with that. All right? So uh, this is a little introduction to optimization. We'll get into some tougher problems. And I might even try to make another video so that you can see some of the tougher ones too. But that's an introduction to optimization. Thank you very much. Have a great day.